This is the Russian kamikaze drone from Iran, also known as Jiran-2, while the Islamic Republic of Iran's army, unofficial name is Shahid-136. There are slight differences and upgrades between the two. Let us dive into it. The Iranian Shahid-136 uses an inertial navigation system, which cannot be jammed by radio frequency interference. But it does have its disadvantages, its real-time position data is less reliable than that of the GPS. Once released, it is difficult to track or command. The Russians upgraded these drones with GLONASS, a Russian alternative to GPS. The advantage is it could loiter around and hit its targets when GLONASS or GPS data is linked in real time. But the disadvantages are it could be jammed by bombarding it with radio frequency interference causing the drone to crash. It has been reported that to maximize its range, the drones are being transported by the Tupolev 22M, which is a supersonic, variable sweep wing, long range strategic, and maritime strike bomber. The Tupolev opens its bomb bay door to release two to four drones. Its Matify 50 engine will then take over and travel to its designated target. Reports suggest they are also being altered to fit into this Sukhoi 37 aircraft, a multi-role jet to carry the drone on both of its wings. But this RADO or rocket-assisted takeoff will first ignite to take the drone to a safe area. This might be the only difference if launched from a Sukhoi 37, a multi-role fighter jets versus the Tupolev bomber. The result of this implementation transporting through aircraft increases the range and lethality of this drone from 1,000 km to 3,000 km. That means it could reach almost all of Europe from Russia, proving it to be a capable low-budget cruise missile. This Russian-caliber cruise missile costs around $1 million. The American Tomahawk cruise missile cost about $2 million. The Shahid-136 is more or less a low-budget cruise missile with a reported price tag of just $10,000 to $40,000 depending on variants. While the average price of cars here in America is around $40,000. But in this content, we will look at how this drone works, the Mata 550 engine behind it, and the basic step-by-step -step process of how this system works. It wouldn't be fair if the pros and cons are not analyzed and how they are being tackled and how to counter the drones with old and new weapons. So, let's get straight to the content. Now let us analyze what is a loitering munition. A loitering munition commonly referred to as a suicide drone or kamikaze drone is a type of airborne weapon system that waits calmly around the target location for a duration of time before launching its attack. Loitering munitions are cheap rapid response time against hidden or covert targets that appear for short periods without positioning high-value drones close to the target area. It has its advantages and disadvantages, which will be clarified throughout our content. Now, let us look at the specification. The drone has a reported length of 3.56 meters with a wingspan of 2.59 meters. Let's compare this to a person to understand its size. As you can see, this is pretty huge for a loitering or suicide drone. The Shahid weighs around 220 kilograms while at warhead could weigh ranging from 5 to 50 kilograms, depending on the mission. All that weight is amazingly being powered by a Mato MD-550, which is a Chinese copy of the German engine Limbach L-550E. This engine has a power of only 50 horsepower, but is very economical, which allows the Shahid-136 to cover a long distance. Ukrainians nicknamed these drones mopeds. Although this is not actually a moped, but an air-cooled four-cylinder engine. Let's look at how it sounds like. The soldiers on the battlefield reported it sounded like the World War II German planes the Stuka, but just replaced this with a moped sound buzzing around. Interestingly, the Germans intentionally developed this siren to create a psychological impact in the battlefield. They would install a wind-driven siren that uttered a screaming sound at a maximum dive speed. But instead of the German Stuka siren in this modern battlefield, you will be hearing a moped sound buzzing in the air which would be soaring through the sky. These are reported to be the flaps located just beside the engine, and these are what are called the elevens, which function like the elevator of the plane. It has been reported that the Russian drones are guided by GLONASS Russian GPS. While in the case of Shahid drone, it uses anti-radiation seeker located in the middle of the fuselage. 
For those of you who are not familiar, what are anti-radiation seeker? It is a missile or drone that is designed to detect and home in on an enemy radio emission source to strike its target. Combining the Delta Wing configuration with the MATA 550 engine will give the drone a range of 1,000 kilometers while the reported cruising range is 2,500 kilometers. Now let us look at what is inside the belly of this drone. This is the RATO or Rocket Assisted Takeoff, which we'll be explaining its working later in the content. Let us look at the basic step-by-step -step process of how this works. Step number one. The drone is carried on a simple truck carrier that looks like it is carrying cargo. But inside this cover are these swarm drones. Each launcher in a standard truck container contains five drones. Step number two. Inertial navigation or GLONASS data, a Russian alternative to GPS fed to these drones. Points to be noted, they are using a civilian inertial navigation system but could be upgraded in the future. Step number three. At a press of a button, the drone is launched with the rocket-assisted takeoff. This rocket-assisted takeoff is ejected just like this. This was installed to reduce weight and efficiency and let the two-stroke engine take over. Rocket-assisted takeoff are also economical and might be reusable for the next drone. Step number four. As these are swarm drones, a total of five to 10 are used all at once to overwhelm the enemy air defense system. Step number five. The drone will be loitering at extremely low altitudes, which would make them difficult to shoot. The UAV drones would be operating in a swarm. In addition, the Shahid-136 are quite small and have a composite structure, which makes them difficult to detect with the help of radars. Step number six. When it reached its targets, the drone will dive in with all five swarming in full speed. Now let's look at its limitations. As stated, the precision of the Russian drone terminal is derived from GLONASS, a Russian alternative to GPS. If this is jammed, obstructed, or disabled, this could stop the drone from getting to its target. This drone is flown at very low speed and could be countered by the Javelin or even Stinger missiles, but the cost factor comes into play. A Javelin missile cost around $78,000 alone, so you get the picture. Solution number one is the weather balloons used by the British and Allied forces to counter or limit the amount of Stuka dive bombers during the Second World War. This might be able to obstruct the drones. Also keeping in mind, this is just an assumption. Another solution is the Depard, which is an all-weather capable German self-propelled anti-aircraft gun with built-in radar. These could counter most of the drones at an effective range of 5.5 km. The third cheaper version is the Soviet Union anti-aircraft gun Zu-23 used by Ukraine. It was designed to engage low-flying targets at a range of 2.5 km, which are battle-tested since the 1970s. Considering all these limitations, we have to remember these are swarms drones, operating in a group of five. One drone might always get past the defense system and thus create a dangerous weapon in this modern battlefield. At AI Telly, we produce military engineering content regardless of countries. So smash the subscribe and like button to help us produce more content like these.